Anime has definitely come a long way in the West. Over the past quarter century, many anime, including but not limited to Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, Dragon Ball, Naruto, Sailor Moon, Bleach, and Yu Yu Hakusho have achieved great success in the US just as they did in Japan, thanks to having fun, engaging, and resonating characters and stories. However, even with this big influx, there are many anime that never made the leap over due to either a lack of interest, or not doing well enough to keep going and leave a significant impact. This is especially the case for the series we'll be talking about today. I'm the Media Nutso, and it's time we take a dive into the history of the English dub of Magical Do Re Mi. If you guys enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down below, and if you'd like to see more like it, be sure to hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss an upload. And now, on with the show. Now, before we dive into the dub proper, let's first have a look at where the series all began. started with the original Ojama Jo Do Re Mi. Created by Izumi Toto, the very first series created and produced under that pen name, and animated by Toei Animation, the series is about Do Re Mi Chan, along with her friends Hatsuki Chan and Ayako Chan, then later joined by Do Re Mi Chan's sister Papu Chan and their rival turned friend Opu Chan training to become witches through passing a series of exams so that Dore Michan can change the witch, Majo Rika, back to her original form. After the former revealed her identity as a witch and cursed her to be a witch frog. Because of course that would happen. It first premiered on TV Asahi on February 7th, 1999, and it went on to be a big hit running for 51 episodes, with the finale airing on January 30th, 2000. But that was only the beginning, because a week later on February 6th, the sequel Ojama Jo Doremi Sharp hit the airwaves. This time around, the girls have witnessed the birth of a mysterious baby in the witch world, Hanachan, and by witch law, they are tasked with taking care of Hanachan for one year while also being granted their magic powers back. It ran for another 49 episodes, with the final one airing on January 28, 2001. Afterwards came Mato Ojama Jo Doremi on February 4, 2001. In here, the girls are given the opportunity to earn their witch apprenticeships back. But in order to do so, they have to make special pastries for the witch senate. But it won't be too difficult, as they get help from a new witch apprentice, Momoko-chan, who had moved to Japan from New York, and the others, in return, help her get adjusted to a new environment. Running for another 50 episodes, it would conclude on January 27, 2002. Then came the final series, Ojama Jo Doremi Dokan, on February 3, 2002. Here, the group has to deal with the sudden growth of Hanachan, who has voluntarily aged herself up and is granted permission to become a witch apprentice. At the same time though, the former witch queen's curse has fully bloomed and Doremi Chan and friends can only stop it by reminding the queen of her fondest memories. But that would prove to be easier said than done. Running for another 51 episodes, it would officially conclude the series' run on January 26, 2003. However, that wasn't the end just yet. The following year, on June 26, 2004, 
a 13 episode OVA series, Ochamajo Dorimi Na I Sho, which takes place during the events of Moto, would air and finish its run on December 11th of that year. It also spawned three feature films, the third of which was made to celebrate the series' 20th anniversary, and a web anime. Throughout its entire run in Japan, the franchise was, as I said earlier, a huge success. In fact, it went on to become the third longest running Magical Girl anime of all time, just behind Sailor Moon and Pretty Cure. This isn't even taking into account the large amount of merchandise sold over the years. It even won a couple of awards, including a win for Best Screenplay for Takashi Yamada, and a notable entry in the television category at the Tokyo Anime Awards. Man, now that's what you call reaping in the fruits of the labor! Okay, now that we've got all of that laid out, let's finally get into how the series crossed over to America. Naturally, with how big a hit it was in Japan, and given their previous success with Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball, Toei was looking to bring the series over to the States. So, in August of 2000, Toei commissioned a dub of the first episode to the Canadian studio Ocean Productions, specifically their subsidiary Blue Waters. From there, they proceeded to shop it around to potential licensors, and unfortunately, no one was interested in it. But even with that setback, the series would eventually make its way to the United States one way or another. Enter 4Kids Entertainment. Now, what can be said about this company that hasn't already been said by others? Whether you loved or hated them, there was no question that they played a key role in helping anime gain a bigger foothold in the US. So, how did they come into play with Ojama Jo Doremi? Well, around 2003, on top of their continued success with Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh!, they were also having great success with their own Saturday morning block, The Fox Fox, and at that time, they were looking to expand on their female audience. It was through this initiative that they acquired several female-centric shows, including, but not limited to, Winx Club, Tokyo Mew Mew, which was renamed Mew Mew Power, and of course, Ojama Jo Doremi, which was renamed to Magical Doremi. Thus, in October of 2003, 4Kids began negotiations with Toei to license the show and would finalize their contract in the following year. Now, I can't talk about their deal without addressing the big elephant in the room when it comes to it. For those not in the know, in order to secure the rights, 4Kids had to agree to dub another anime that Toei really wanted to bring over to the States. That anime was One Piece, and it goes without saying that their dub of it went on to be regarded as one of the worst English dubs of all time. Alright, getting back on track, while the title change is localization at work, it should be noted that this wasn't just done for the US. See, in several countries, like in France, Italy, and Mexico, the series was also renamed to Magical Doremi. This was due to the original title, Ojamajo, being an untranslatable Japanese portmanteau. Said portmanteau being of the Japanese words Ojama, which can mean bothersome or nuisance, and Majo, which means witch. Thus, the title translates to Bothersome Witch Doremi. Yeah, I'd imagine it would have been a mouthful had they properly translated the full title. Anyways, with the licensing deal all set, 4Kids was ready to bring the show to a young female audience and also have it teach them too. No, I wasn't kidding about that last bit. In a press release, 
Four Kids had pitched and sold the show as being educational and informational. Now, to be fair, the original Japanese version was a little bit educational. I mean, one of the main settings is at a school, but it mainly did so through conveying subtle moral lessons and messages. However, that wasn't going to be good enough for the US, especially for the FCC's EI guidelines. For the English dub's production, it went through a heavy amount of editing and localization. In addition to the new title, all of the characters' names were changed, like Dore Michan became Dory, Majo Rika became Patina, Hatsuki chan was renamed Rayan, and Aiko chan became Mirabelle. The fictional Japanese town Misura became a fictional American harbor town Port Mystic. The Maho shop was changed to, at first, the Rusty Broom, then later the Doremi Magic Shop. The original Japanese score was removed in favor of composing an entirely new one by Louis Cordelezzi, Matt McGuire, Ralph Shuckett, and John Siegler. Any sort of cultural references were taken out. Heck, they even threw in a couple of American references, which don't make any sense. The terminology was changed. Witch Apprentice became Witchling, Witch Frog became Greenling, Apprentice Tats became Dream Spinners, Magic Spears became Spell Drops, and you get the idea. Nearly all of the text was erased or swapped out, any instances of blood or violence was edited out, and in one case, they heavily edited an entire episode in order to change the original plot. And just to take it one step further, anytime someone is seen driving, they horizontally flip the shots to make it look like they're driving on the right side of the road. Now, some of these changes were somewhat understandable, as they needed to have the show comply with both network standards and practices and the EI guidelines. But other changes? Yeah. On a side note, the American English dub title would end up being a unique case. In the countries that received the title change, the one constant from the original was that the title referred to the main character, as in some, her name was retained as Do Re Mi. But the US dub would be the first and only instant this would not be the case. So how did four kids work around it but still retain the title? Well, they decided to make it a pun and have it named not just after Dory, but also the other two main leads, by simply taking the first two letters of their first names. And it's no coincidence that they're also the first three notes of the musical scale. Anyways, for the casting, they brought in their large stable of voice actors, including Casey Rogers, Amy Pallant, Rebecca Solar, Keither Donahue, Sean Schemmel, Carrie Williams, and Lisa Ordens. To drum up interest for the show, Four Kids utilized the tactic they had previously used with Pokemon and Mew Mew Power, give a special sneak preview prior to the official premiere. In the case of Magical Do Re Mi, they selected the fourth episode, which aired on August 13, 2005. This selection actually made sense, as it is where the main three officially came together as a group. When it came to the merchandise, Four Kids teamed up with Bandai to produce a toy line that included toy wanderers, dream spinners, and dolls of the main three witchlings. By the way, some of the dolls came with a DVD that had the fourth episode on it as a bonus. This is particularly notable as it's the only episode out of the whole dub to get any sort of official home video release. It's rather sad in hindsight. The show was originally set to premiere in November of 2005, but for one reason or another, it was decided to bump it up by two months to September 10th. When the series finally casted its magic spell on 4Kids TV, that spell was unfortunately not strong enough to wow viewers, as it would garner low ratings throughout its entire run on the block. There were many factors that contributed to its failure. Moving up the premiere date gave them less time to promote the show, 
it was given some lackluster time slots, airing around 7 or 8 in the morning, when the target audience is either asleep or just starting to get up, and was further exacerbated by the time slots getting shuffled around, the competition from the other kids blocks and cable networks, and the simplest answer of them all, there just wasn't a strong demand for more Magical Girl anime. I mean, it really says a lot when the only other Magical Girl series besides Sailor Moon to get any kind of traction in the West was Carcaptor Sakura. It didn't help either that its merchandise didn't sell very well. As for what viewers thought of it, it was a very mixed bag. Fans of the original Japanese version weren't too happy with all the editing and localization done to it, while others thought it was just okay, saying that the dub wasn't that bad, with some even saying it was one of 4Kid's better dubs, and they did enjoy some of the songs they made. After the 26th episode aired, the show would continue to play in reruns on the block until it was taken off on August 19, 2006. So, with it proven to be both a ratings and merchandising failure, did Magical Doremi's journey in the United States end there? Believe it or not, no it didn't. Most likely due to contractual obligations, 4Kids had to dub the remainder of the first series. The only problem? It had just been cancelled from the block. So, what did they do to rectify it? Well, they decided to take it online. A year after its network cancellation, 4Kids premiered the second half of the series on their official website, billed it as Season 2, on November 13, 2007. They would go on to premiere one new episode per week until the final episode aired on May 2, 2008. There was even a point where they uploaded the entire dub onto their official YouTube channel. The only episode that never got dubbed was episode 30. For what reason, you may be wondering? Well, the episode involved the kids wandering around a temple and a cemetery at night with very little adult supervision, and it dealt with a religion that's not very common in the US. While it would have been a fitting spooky episode to air around Halloween, there was no way they could have edited around this one like they did with episode 19. So, with the move to the internet, did the show perform better or worse? Honestly, I have no idea. I wasn't able to find the statistics for the traffic the site received, so it can't really be said for certain. Well, now that 4Kids has officially finished dubbing the whole series, is it now at the end of its journey? Not quite yet. In fact, it would actually get one last win on television. On April 24, 2010, 4 Kids brought the show back to TV as a part of the CW 4 Kids, airing for almost three months on the block, and it would air for the very last time on July 17th. After that, 4 Kids' license with the show expired and it would never return to the US. And with that, now its journey in America has officially come to a close. So at this point, you may well ask, why hasn't another dubbing company licensed the show in the years since? After all, if One Piece, Sailor Moon, and Carcaptor Sakura could all get a second dub, surely this series can get one too. Sadly, it's not exactly that easy. Like I said earlier, apart from the latter two shows I mentioned, there's really not a huge demand to bring more Magical Girl anime over to the US. Plus, even if there was interest, Aside from a few mild bits of language and blood, it's mainly a kid's anime, so it probably wouldn't fit their respective repertoires. Oh sure, there are some out there that would love to have a more faithful dub, and who knows, maybe sooner or later one company might acquire the license and make it happen. But until that time, for the moment, it won't be happening anytime soon.
In conclusion, the English dub of Magical Do Re Mi may not be the best dub out there, but it's certainly far from one of the worst. Yes, the amount of editing and localization done is crazy and ridiculous, but the cast worked well with the material they had, and it does kind of have a charm to it. Plus, to four kids' credit, unlike what they tried to do with One Piece, apart from the educational aspects and a couple of episodes, they did attempt to keep it true to the spirit of the original. If you want to track down the dub just for a laugh, like I mentioned earlier, apart from the fourth episode, it never got an official full home media release. That and the DVD is rather hard to find these days. The only way you can see it is by going to archive.org, though it's not exactly in the best quality. But hey, something is better than nothing. I hope you all had fun watching the video and that it helped shed some light on this particular anime's dub history. Thank you.